everyone. So today I'm here with Mr. Finnegan, or Finn, as most of you guys know him. For those of you who don't know, Finn is a Madagascar Lesser Hedgehog Tenric, and despite the name, he is not a hedgehog. Whenever I have him on camera, the first question I get is, what kind of hedgehog is he? He's not one at all. He's not even related. It's not going to focus on him, because it wants to focus on me. <coughs> Today's video I wanted to talk about some of the differences between uh, hedgehogs and tenrics and the reason why people get them so easily confused. I want to add that Finn is my very first lesser tenric and he is only about a year and a half right now so I haven't even had him that long. Uh, so I'm definitely no expert. He's drooling on me. <laughs> uh, I am definitely no expert and I am just going to be conveying some of the differences that I have noticed and some of the things that I have learned about in the time that I have had Finn and in the time before that I was researching tenrics. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about the number one thing that confuses people, and that's the fact that tenrics have quills. They're very short, particularly in comparison to a hedgehog's, and as you can see as well, tenrics in general are much smaller. Um, he takes up, you know, four fingers here, <laughs> and he weighs 160 grams, but he is about to go into torpor very, very soon, and, um, so this is about the heaviest he will ever get and he will lose most of that over the winter. So these quills or spines as they're technically called are what easily confuse people um, into thinking that tenrics are related to hedgehogs but the reason that they both happen to have quills is something called convergent evolution, which essentially means that if two separate species of animals are put in similar conditions, eventually they will evolve to have some of the same defense mechanisms. Like, for example, the quills. Uh, the quills on a hedgehog are their number one defense. The quills on a tenric are probably their second defense. Their first being their little mouths, and of course, Finn is very drooly right now. You'll have to excuse that. He's probably going to want to start bathing soon because that's what he does with all that drool. So that's the reason they look so similar, but they are totally unrelated. In fact, tenrics are more closely related to elephants than they are to hedgehogs. So I've set Finn down uh, on my lap so that he can use some of that drool that he's dribbling all over me to clean himself with rather than dripping it all over me. So uh, let's talk about some of the differences that I can think of for you guys just to show you how different they really are. Um, one of the biggest differences you'll find between lesser tenrics and hedgehogs is the fact that lesser tenrics diets are almost entirely insectivore based. Um, they are technically omnivorous but they thrive on a more insectivore based diet. That means that the majority of Finn's diet consists of insects. In fact, all of Finn's diet consists of insects. Now that's not entirely normal, that's him being picky. It's normal to an extent because a lot of them are picky. Um, but yes, they can eat a lot of other things, but the, the predominant part of their diet should be insects. Whereas, your average African pygmy hedgehog that's a pet will eat predominantly a cat kibble based diet with a, any additions to that being treat based. So uh, while my hedgehogs eat, you know, a tablespoon to two tablespoons of cat kibble a night, Finn has to eat a variety of insects to keep him healthy and thriving. Tenrics also rely heavily on having a lot of calcium in their diets. They can actually get a disorder called metabolic bone disease, uh, which humans can get as well from lacking calcium. Essentially, their bones will stop developing correctly. This is especially important in young tenrics, so a lot of people, including myself, supplement calcium in addition to their insects, um, whereas with hedgehogs, you don't as long as you're having a well-rounded cat kibble, you don't have to supplement calcium. Another one of the more significant differences between lesser tenrics and hedgehogs is their housing, and this is because 
Tenrex happen to be semi-arboreal, whereas hedgehogs are ground dwellers. You can really see this difference in their paws, especially Tenrex have what I would more closely equate to hands and hedgehogs have what I would more closely equate to paws. And this is because Tenrex use their hands or paws to grip onto things to climb. Now because Tenrex are more arboreal and hedgehogs are more ground dwellers, their cages have to be arranged differently. Uh, Tenrex should be able to utilize upper levels of their cages. As you can sort of see here, Finn's cage extends fully to the top of the cage. Now, if you've seen my previous um, cage tour in this, I hadn't put in the loft yet, and that's because I wasn't, I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it, but um, essentially his cage extends fully to the top. He also has vines back in this corner that he likes to climb, and those are because he's semi-arboreal and because he can utilize those. Hedgehogs, because they're ground dwellers, often don't do well with lofts, and those lofts that they do have have to be fully secured, both the ramp and the top. Another difference is that hedgehogs absolutely need heating. They need to stay between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit at all times, no matter the time of year or time of day. Whereas Tenrix are a little more lenient when it comes to heating, particularly in the winter when they are in torpor, they don't need supplemented heating. I tend to keep Finn's cage around 80, but this room stays around 80 regardless. It isn't an additional heat source. Some Tenrix need additional heat depending on what they're doing, whether they're struggling to come out of torpor or something like that, but for the most part, you don't have to be concerned with Tenrix potentially dying because they're too cold. On the topic of torpor, lesser Tenrix go into torpor every winter. Generally, it starts in the fall and ends in the spring, um, with them being in partial torpor in the spring and fall months, with, but a full torpor during the winter, for the adults at least. And that is in direct opposition to African pygmy hedgehogs who should be prevented from doing that at any point because they do not build up fat prior to hibernation and they do not build up the resources to keep them alive during that. Now you'll hear me use torpor and hibernation kind of interchangeably, particularly in this video because when referring to hedgehogs it is often referred to as hibernation, but referring to Tenrix it is torpor, which is sort of a partial hibernation. If you'd like to know more about the differences between the two of those because they are different, you'll have to look them up. Um, but I just want to apologize for using the words interchangeably because they're not necessarily interchangeable processes. You'll also find, particularly if you watch my channel, that um, my hedgehogs are in a very unnatural environment. They're on fleece um, and they use cozy beds instead of, uh, you know, wooden houses and things like that, whereas Finn, I have transitioned to an almost fully natural setup. And this is because hedgehogs seem to thrive just as fine on a more modern approach to housing, whereas Tenrix seem to thrive more on a more natural environment. Finn eats better, he's more social, he's just more tenrix -y in general now that he's on a more natural setup than he ever did when he was on fleece. Whereas my hedgehogs, I have put them on both bedding and fleece in the past and they have used them pretty much interchangeably with no difference. I honestly believe that this is because a lesser tenric is not a fully domesticated animal whereas an African pygmy hedgehog is pretty much an entirely domesticated hedgehog. In fact, the African pygmy hedgehogs that you would get in the US you cannot find in the wild and they cannot survive in the wild. Another just general difference is that tenrix take sand baths and hedgehogs take water baths. Um, this difference is a fairly cosmetic one but essentially tenrix know how to use sand to exfoliate their skin, to remove dirt, dead skin, things like that, whereas hedgehogs don't have that behavior built into them. It's not a natural instinct for them to rub sand on themselves. Their arms don't even really go that way. Um, so when it comes to bathing, a lot of them need assistance 
my hedgehogs only really need baths once or twice a month um, but some hedgehogs particularly when they're young tend to need them more often it depends on the hedgehog but either way they need water baths whereas Tenrix you really should avoid contact with the water with them because most of the time it's unnecessary and it's going to do more damage to their skin than good. Because Tenrex are semi-arboreal and hedgehogs are ground dwellers, hedgehogs really, really need a wheel to thrive in an enclosed environment such as a cage as a pet. They really need a wheel as a form of enrichment. Hedgehogs without wheels have been known to go stir crazy because their main form of enrichment is running and it would be if they were in the wild their most common activity. Whereas since Tenrix are semi-arboreal, a lot of Tenrix will never touch a wheel um, or it can be very difficult for you to find a wheel they like. I went through one, two, three. I went through three different wheels before settling on the saucer wheel, which he uses every single night. A lot of Tenrix tend to never use their wheels because they are busy doing all of the other things in their cages. Um, it's still recommended to provide one unless your Tenric is totally against them. Temperament is one of the most noticeable differences people point out in my videos as well. Lesser Tenrics tend to naturally be a little more social than hedgehogs and because they're not as fearful they also tend to be easier to bond with. And this is just sort of their natural disposition. You'll find other Tenrics that sometimes fall out of that spectrum but they tend to be the exception and not the rule. Um, You'll also find that when Tenrix do get defensive, they tend to bite more than they would sort of ball up and hiss at you. Um, not that Tenrix are naturally bitey creatures because I've never been bitten by Finn more than him like warning me. Um, similar to like if a dog puts its mouth on you but doesn't bite down. He's done that once or twice but he's never actually bitten down on me. Whereas when hedgehogs are feeling defensive or when they don't want to be bothered by you, they will stick their quills straight up and they will hiss and they will pop. And they do this to try and get you to leave them alone, whether it's out of fear or whether it's out of just general, get the heck off of me. <laughs> Of course there are always outliers on both sides of the spectrum. There are fairly anti-social Tenrix and there are very social hedgehogs. But generally speaking, Tenrix are more easygoing and easy to bond with and hedgehogs tend to take more time. Now one of the differences that people don't tend to think about um, but was really important to me when I was purchasing Finn is that Tenrix have a significantly longer lifespan than hedgehogs do. Hedgehogs tend to only live about five years is the average. Four to seven is what we typically say, but five years tends to be where most hedgehogs lie. Whereas Tenrix average right now about 10 to 12 years however the oldest one on record that i know of is 17. so their lifespan is nearly double that of a hedgehog which is something really important to consider when you are thinking about adopting one or the other because tenrix are a much larger commitment both financially but also just time wise you will have this pet for a significantly longer time than you would ever have a single hedgehog now, while I have him this close to my face, I also want to touch on something that I didn't think I was going to mention while, while sort of planning this video, but um, lesser Tenrix, particularly male lesser Tenrix, do have an odor. It's not a noticeable one, like if I'm holding him right here, I can't smell it. I can smell it here right up to my face um, or when his cage is dirty. So male Tenrix particularly have sort of a musk about them that smells... Um, People frequently compare their general musk to Fritos. Um, I don't really get Fritos when I smell it, so I'm not entirely sure how best to describe it to you guys, but it's nothing that's overwhelmingly strong unless they themselves are dirty, like you're not um, giving them access to a sand bath. A lot of Tenrix that don't use their sand baths happen to smell much stronger. Um, it's also in their urine so if their cage goes too long without being cleaned you can you can sort of smell it then. Um, whereas hedgehogs themselves do not have any odor at all. Um, their feces has an odor of course because all animal feces has an odor but 
hedgehogs themselves like if you were to hold a clean one up to your nose you would not smell anything from them because they don't tend to be musky in any sort of way are you trying are you trying to get up there you go on the topic of their odor though hedgehogs are significantly more dirty than tenrics are meaning of course as most of you guys would know if you have learned about hedgehogs hedgehogs happen to uh pee and poop as they run which means their wheels become very messy they also are incredibly difficult to litter train uh which means a lot of the time their cage will get messy as well whereas tenrix tend to naturally pick a corner um, or a wheel or their sand bath they tend to naturally pick a spot to go to the bathroom um, Finn tends to go on his wheel and in his sand bath and nowhere else and so that makes them both very clean themselves but also very easy to manage as far as maintenance goes a difference that is fairly obvious with Finn sitting here on my hand is their size. Now, of course, Finn is a lesser Tenric. There are Tenrics that are significantly larger than lesser Tenrics. Lesser Tenrics are the smallest species of Tenric. But in comparison to a hedgehog, Tenrics are significantly smaller. I would say that an adult Tenric is about half the size of your average hedgehog. Um, you can see here fully extended he still is only about the length of five fingers maybe now hedgehogs weights vary incredibly all the way from 300 grams to some are healthy at 600 grams mine are both in the 500 spectrum um but they are physically about double the size of finn but beyond their hands and how small they are they also have all internal sex organs, which means they are nearly impossible to sex, particularly at a young age. It's slightly easier when they get older because their face shape is different, as well as around their eyes, the males will develop a ring, um, which is sort of red and puffy, and they will also secrete, um, we call it milking, but they will secrete a white substance from their eyes. Now, Finn's never really done this, um, but I do know he's male because he was DNA tested at the breeder, um, which you have to do, you have to do by, uh, sending their saliva off to the Czech Republic. Um, and the reason you do this is because when they're very young, it is pretty much impossible to tell the difference between a male and a female. As you can see here, Finn has one hole at the bottom there, and it is the exact same on a female. This is, of course, significantly different from hedgehogs who um, are typically very easy to sex because male hedgehogs will have what... Uh, is fondly referred to as a belly button, which is their penile sheath. It's right in the center of their stomach, typically, and um, that is where their penis comes out of, as well as when adult males are adults, they do happen to have fairly visible testicles. And of course, on females, the vaginal opening is further down than the penile sheath. So again, it just makes them generally very easy to sex because not only do they have obvious openings for their sex organs on their bodies but also just in general the location of them is fairly easy to decipher even when they're young so i think that's it that i think that's all of the differences that i'm going to cover today i'm sure there are more that i can't think of they are because they are an entirely different species of animal they are very different um but i get the request to do this video all the time and it's it's literally just because these guys look a little similar so i hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as i enjoyed trying to make it i'm sorry if it's a little scatterbrained but comparing two completely different species of animal is more difficult than i thought it would be it's kind of like trying to compare cats and dogs so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of the differences or you would like to add some of the differences down below, feel free to. And uh, I will hopefully see you all in my next video. Bye. Are you comfortable?
You look comfortable. Hmm. Are you gonna go to sleep? Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess I'm ending this at a perfect time because he's going to sleep. <laughs> Bye, guys.